reason you're hearing the anti-Donald Trump rhetoric. And, and that's it. I mean, it's as simple as that. I mean, basic economics tell us that you put tariffs on China goods, 20 percent. And if they don't revalue their currency correctly, you add 5 percent each year until they do. You punish them. You punish them. And then suddenly they come around. That's called negotiating. And I lo by the way, he said something interesting right at the beginning. He said that he's going to hire Carl Icahn as one of his negotiators. That, did you hear that on the show? I hadn't heard that on any other radio or television show. Now, for those of you who know about the legendary Carl Icahn, my God, would I love to have Carl Icahn sitting across the table from those wonderful friends of ours in China? And there's a lot more to be said for, uh, for, the, for the government that uh, Donald Trump would, uh, would bring in. He'd strike down the anchor baby's law, point eight of the Savage Manifesto. Eliminate the loophole in our law that encourages illegal immigrants to enter this country for the purpose of having anchor babies or U.S. citizens simply because they happen to have been born in our hospitals. That's point number eight of my of my 37 uh, point plan. I'm the architect of much of what you're hearing from conservatives today, whether they admit it or not, doesn't matter to me, whether they even know it came from my book doesn't matter to me. All I know is that their script writers have read my work and I wrote this 37 point Savage Manifesto, English only, close the borders, defend the borders, defund and repeal Obamacare, reduce the size and scope of government, liquidate TARP, oil for illegals, strike down anchor baby's law, export jailed illegal aliens, fire, well, she's gone. Point 11, Michael Savage, use profiling to prevent terror attacks. So, you know, you say, am I being specific enough or am I just a bombastic radio host? Well, you could have it any way you want. If you want to paint me as a bombastic radio host who is an ignoramus, you can do that. But if you dare take the time to read any of my books, my most recent is Stop the Coming Civil War. I'm reading now from Trickle Up Poverty. My next book will be Government Zero. You will see the greatest mind of our generation in the history of politics sitting right before this microphone. And I'm going to say it because no one else will. It's that simple. Do I get the credit for that? Has anyone ever said that? I am the man that everyone's copied in this business, everyone. And I give you specifics in my books. I generalize on the radio, I'll admit it. The radio is a different medium than the written word. You have to use a different rhetoric on the radio than in the written word. You have to speak in broad strokes on the radio to keep the audience listening, to communicate with a mass audience, you use a different language structure. It's a very complicated, very complicated difference between the written word and the spoken word which is why when a person reads something, even from their own books, which I have done, it comes across wrong on radio. I can hear it. I've got the ears that can hear what sounds right and what sounds wrong from my own voice. If I read from my own books, it doesn't sound right on the radio because it doesn't sound clean. It doesn't read correctly. The, the syntax is wrong. So anyway, you know, you can get what you want out of me. You want to paint me as one thing, you can do so, but you'd be wrong. You want to really understand me? You really want to understand my genius? Then you read my books. Until then, keep your mouth shut because you're just showing your own ignorance. You're not showing your intelligence by shooting your mouth off and saying Michael Savage is this, Michael Savage is that, when you either never read one of my books or never heard one of my shows. Just pay attention very carefully because the most important people in the world listen to this show. And I'll tell you another little secret that I've learned. Many of the people who are the biggest liberals on earth Listen to this show and agree with most of what I happen to say, but they're afraid to say it themselves. They're secret Murano, uh, they're Murano savage listeners. Look up Murano, you'll know what I'm talking about. All right, when I come back, I want to hear what you have to say about Trump. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. I think I'll have a lot of Democrats. You know, Reagan had Democrats for Reagan. It was a very big group of people in a very big block. I think the I Reagan have a Democrats, lot of Democrats yeah. for Trump. I think I will have a lot of Democrats voting for me, far more than any Republican for the last long period of time. Oh. I, I will say this, and, and I will say this, you know, very strongly. Uh, the the. Republican conservatives were not energized in the last election. Had they been energized and had they voted, uh, you would have seen victory for Mitt Romney. He's 100% right. 
They were turned off by Romney, who wimped out. We know that. Trump on the stump kicks libs in the rump. Let's go to the callers. KSFO, my hometown of San Francisco. Joe, welcome to the Savage Nation. Joe, what's on your mind? Reagan, Democrats, and I like what Donald Trump says because it comes from within. You can see the way the man talks. It all comes from within. He's not making things up like uh, Obama with, uh, with the uh, teleprompter. This guy is for real. And I, 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 like, he might be another Ronald Reagan. I, I missed the first part, Joe. Did you say you're a Democrat? Yes, I am. And I'm a, I'm a Ronald Reagan Democrat, like what Donald Trump said. And I voted for Reagan, and I'm, I like the man personally because the way he talks. He doesn't hold back. Well, I guess that's why you like the Savage Nation show, even though you probably don't agree with a lot of my social policies. But at well, least you know I, you, I agree you, with you about 99.9%. I mean, uh, immigration... All right, well, that's good enough. That's all. What do I need, 99.9? I don't even agree with myself 99% of the time because the next day I say, did I really mean that? I say, well, I did, but it came off a little harsh. You know, now... In the time that remains in this hour, we have to spend it very judiciously. It's a word I rarely use on the show. The judicial use of the broadcasting time in which you are investing. There's a huge sellout going on. Obama wants to give Iran the bomb, and it looks like he won. Now, for those of you who are celebrating yet another victory by this thin man, you should think very carefully, because I will again play for you a portion of a speech today by John Kerry, where he admits that they're capitulating and appeasing the mullahs in Iran in order to pass the baton down to the next president who will have to take them on. We want a real man. We don't want a, a, a metrosexual. We don't want another metrosexual in office. And we don't want another soft-spoken, uh, you know, lobbyist like we have now, the, uh, the expert on, on climate change. Studied constitutional law in college, doesn't understand the Constitution. Now, with no formal scientific training, he's analyzing climate change. And here he is filming a reality show. One thing this proves is that Barack Obama is a genius when it comes to know how dumb his supporters are. That's all. End of story. 15,000 years we've seen this going on. And by the way, on the other side of the Earth, in the Antarctic, the ice has been growing. The ice has been growing. And how come the 97% of sellout phony scientists will never debate in an open forum? The 97% of Soviet scientists who receive government grants to put out this big lie about global warming will never debate climate skeptics, ever. Because the Marxist agenda is total. So he changes the name of a mountain, Mount McKinley, to get the, uh, the Inuits to support his climate change agenda. Unbelievable to me. The man lives in Disneyland. 300 years, uh, th 10,000 years ago, North America was covered in 300 feet of ice. <laughs> and then it slowly started to retreat. I remember there was a famous um, scientist we had on years ago on the Savage Nation. I forget his name. I think he's a Dutch scientist. He's fabulous. And he tells the story of how as the glaciers were coming down in Sweden, they were growing. In, this, in the small ice, little ice age. They started to grow. See, they had retreated during a previous warming phase, and the Swedes had inhabited these grass, these lands, the alpine lands where the ice had retreated. They built homes. They had some gardens going up there, up in the alpine uh, lands. And then suddenly the little ice age occurred, 1500s, and the ice started to move down, come down towards the inhabited areas. And he told the story of how the Swedes had their priests hold crosses before the glaciers that were emerging, asking God to stop the glaciers from crushing their lands, burying their lands under ice. You hear this? I guess Obama didn't study that in his textbook on Alinskyism. Didn't get around to that in the streets of Chicago in his huddles with Al Sharpton, the other climate genius. The greatest thing I ever heard in my life was Al Sharpton, the uneducated adult street radical, talking about carbon, the pollution of carbon, and how other pollutions like carbon are destroying the world. Unreal. I mean, they, I don't know who they're talking to. I don't know who they're talking to. I don't know who they're talking to. I don't know who's killing the police.
I don't know anything about anything. Now, you know everything. So anyway, here we are. Trump was the issue today. Iran is the issue today because today was the final straw. That creature, Mikulski, thank God she's gone. But what she did was she, she threw a bomb at America as she left. And she threw in with, um, with uh, Barry on, on the Iran deal. I can't imagine what they gave her in return. She held out for the biggest payout she could get. Boy, must she have gotten a payday. So the creature leaves Mikulski, and she says she's supporting the Iran deal after so-called sitting on the fence. I can imagine what that fence had to be made of for her to sit on it this long. But you got to listen to Kerry in clip number two, and you'll hear why Iran must be confronted now when they are relatively weak. Listen to clip two, and I'll explain it to you. My friends, it just doesn't make sense to conclude that we should vote no now because of what might happen in 15 years, thereby guaranteeing that what might happen in 15 years will actually begin to happen now. Because if this agreement is rejected, every possible reason for worry in the future would have to be confronted now. Stop there. Would have to be immediately confronted, which is why Kerry and Obama have capitulated and appeased the mullahs in Iran because they don't want to confront them immediately. They want the next president and the next Congress to have to do the job that these capitulators do not want to do. That's why the so-called deal is a sellout by the uh, uh, Iran-Obama axis of evil. It is a sellout by the Iran-Obama axis of evil because Obama does not want to confront them. He wants to not only capitulate and appease them, I think he is them. And by the way, I'd like to know how much money is being made on Iran deals by members of Congress, their husbands, etc., especially the senators from California. I just can't imagine that they would have missed an opportunity like this. I'd love to know what Soros' holdings are with companies that are going to make billions of dollars with Iran. It'd be just a little hunch I have that there's got to be money involved. But let's go back to Trump. I didn't ask him about Iran. I had only 10, 12, 15 minutes. The next case would have been the Iran deal, which I know he opposes. I think he's going to meet in Washington, give a speech in Washington against it. 200 retired admiral, uh, generals and admirals oppose the Iran deal. 200 of them. They can't say a word while they're in, in office because they get fired. They get smeared and then they get destroyed by the new Stalin. Tom on WMAL, Trump is the question. What's your point? Yes, sir. Two questions I would ask him. See, I, I, he's on my short list. So I'm very intrigued. However, there are things that worry. One is, with all her background, cattle futures, all the things that went on during the 90s with her husband in office, why did he support her for Senate? The other question is, how do we take him seriously when he does things like when they were talking when, some time ago about who he would have? Well, let's, go back to, oh, let's go back to that issue. It's a very important one. Why did he support Hillary Clinton for Senate? What year was that in? That was earlier, well, it was 15 years ago, but still, with all the scandals prior to that, the well, cattle... Let, let's deal with, let me, let me try, let me, I'm not an apologist for Trump, but I'm going to explain what I think you might hear. Where is Donald Trump's headquarters located? Well, New York, I know, but then... Well, let's stay, take it one point at a time. If you were a big developer and a big hotel operator in New York, would you not want to support your senators from New York? those who would support you her campaign before she was senator well he knew I, that she'd probably win he knew what a force she was and he knew he had to continue doing business would you want to turn her into your your enemy i understand but again i know yeah. because you're a purist who listens to too much talk radio you're not a realist and this is what separates me from the other the others which is i'm a realist I'm not just a, a blabbermouth on the radio who doesn't know the real world or real business. Most of them live in the, in, the, in the world of reading papers to each other, reading each other's blogs, listening to each other talk at conferences, but they've never owned so much as a hockey puck stand. They've never sold hockey pucks door to door. I've been a dishwasher. I've been a lifeguard. I've been a factory worker in an ice cream factory. I'm going to go down the list. I've been a, uh, a janitor. I've done all those things. I'm an immigrant son. I've worked my way up from the bottom. 
I know what the real world is like. I was in a pharmacy assistant when I was 12 years old, and I saw what government does to businessmen when they almost put the pharmacists out of business. This poor Italian guy was eating his lunch at his desk in 